Hello everybody! In this Python tutorial we're going to go over how to create a stacked bar chart that looks like this. So let's jump right in and go over our code. The first thing we did here is we imported our libraries and our modules and we imported matplotlib.pyplot, matplotlib.patches, and numpy. The next thing we did here is we created the data for our x and y axis. Then we created our code that will actually create and plot the chart. Then here we created our code that will place the labels onto the chart, such as the title and the x and y axis. Then here we created our code that will create our legend for our chart. And then here, depending on what text editor or IDE you're using, you may need to type out plt.show to actually show the chart. So let's go over this code in just a little bit more detail now. These three sets of data that we put into lists and assign to the variables bar 1, bar 2, and bar 3 are the data values for each color on the bar. So this bar 1 data set represents the values for the gray part. Bar 2 represents the values for the yellow part of the stack bars. And bar 3 represents the red part. Then here we create our initial locations on the x-axis that will correspond to the y-axis and help us plot our data and create the bar chart. Then here to actually create and plot the bars we use plt.bar and just a quick reminder remember that the plt is what we assigned the matplotlib.pyplot to here. Okay, So we use plt.bar and we put in three or four arguments. For the first bar we just put in three arguments. We put in the x data and the y data. And we do the same thing for the others. So the first argument is the x data, then we have our y data. Remember that's the data we created here. This is the y data, and this is the x data. Then we put in a color for each part of the stack bar. And the part that makes this all work is the fourth argument that we put in for bar 2 and bar 3. And that is the bottom argument. Okay. Now what this does is it looks at the values of the previous bar, and it helps it know where to place itself onto the chart so it appropriately stacks itself and creates a stacked bar chart. Let's go over an example. So for bar 2, which is the yellow part, the fourth argument needs to know where it needs to start. And that's where it uses the bottom argument, and it looks at the previous bar. For example, on this first bar here, the yellow part of the bar that you see here knows where it should be placed based on where the gray part stops, okay? So basically what you want to do when you want to stack these is you want to use the bottom argument and then put in a value that tells that part of the bar where its bottom should be. For this one we put in bar 1 and for this bar again the yellow knows where to start in this case because the gray bar first argument is 2, okay? So if we count the sections we go 1, 2, the yellow knows where to start its bottom here and it starts it at 2. For the next bar, the yellow starts at the bottom of 3 and that's based on bar 1 data because the next argument is 3. And if you follow this data along, so for example we go 2, 4, 5, the yellow starts its bottom at 2 for this bar and it starts its bottom at 4 for this bar and 5 for this bar. Okay. Now to stack another bar it gets just a little bit more tricky but the principle is the same. So in order to tell bar 3 where to start and where its bottom should be, there's several different ways that we can do this. One way is to use a map. And let's just do a quick review of how this map works. So here's some information about the map function. And what the map function does is it takes two arguments. The first is the function. That's where we put in our lambda. And then it applies that function to the second part, which are the iterables. OK, so we used our map. We put in our function this lambda function, which basically is going to add two values together, will apply itself to these iterables. And then to take those values and put them in a list, we just wrap the whole thing in a list. So that's one way to do it. Another way you can do it is with a list comprehension, and the code for that looks like this right here. Okay, so you could use this comprehension for the bottom, or you could use this list with the map. 
Now let's go ahead and use this print to show you exactly what this code will display. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's close our help screen. And you can see that it prints out 3, 4, 5, 7, and 9. Now again, we assign that to the bottom. So if we look at those values on the y-axis, we count up three sections, one, two, three. You can see that it appropriately starts its red part of the stack bar right there at three. The next value is four. So if we count out one, two, three, four, you can see that the red part starts at four. The next is five. Count up five, the red part starts. Then we have seven. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven. So there's four gray parts and three yellow parts. That's seven. The red part starts at seven. And the last bar, we have nine. And if you count up nine, that's where the red starts. Okay, so that is the code that will allow you to plot the different bars and to stack them. Now just a quick review. For the first bar, you can put in the arguments as normal. For the second bar, you'll want to go ahead and put in a bottom argument and tell the bottom of that bar where to start, okay? And if you stack additional bars, you'll have to do something just a little bit more tricky and put in code like this with the map and the lambda, or you could also use a list comprehension like this. And basically what that does is it adds the values of bar one and bar two together, puts them in a list, and helps bar three know exactly where to start. Okay, moving on. Here we have plt.xtix. Here's some information about the xtix, but basically the xtix function takes two arguments. The first argument are the locations on the x-axis, and the second are the labels that you want to place at those locations. Then here we have plt.yTix, which allows us to have a little bit more control over the values of what's shown on the y-axis and how they're incremented. Here we have placed our grid. So those are the gray lines that you see on our chart for the grid. And in this case, we just put in the grid lines that correspond to the y-axis. Here we have created our title. And here we have created the labels for our x and y-axis. Now to create a simple legend, we've gone ahead and created our patches for each color, the gray, the yellow, and the red. And to do that for each, we use mpatches.patch, and inside the round brackets for the patch, we assign the color and the label. Then to actually create and plot the legend, we use plt.legend. Then we put in our patches inside of a list and assign that to the handles. We've also put in another argument here, which allows us to put the legend in the upper left. Okay, so that's all we have for this tutorial on how to create a stacked bar chart. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.